Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Main Street in America, or anywhere else, is the center of town. In Barcelona, it's where La, El Corte Inglés is. It's where that mm-hmm. store is. Yep. In, uh, in New York, it's uh, Fifth Avenue or Broadway or Columbus. In Wheeling, it's Main Street. Yep. And in most cities in America, it's Main Street. Main Street or Center right. Street or something like and that. And we're going to make the analogy today, Dave, that the 62 simple moving average is like Main Street. Yeah. With, in particular with respect to these options contracts. And the suburbs are like a currency pair or an options, on, an options contract on a currency pair moving away from the 62. In the right. same way that someone would travel down to work on Main Street and then go back home at night and live in their little shiny boxes or whatever mm-hmm. made of ticky-tacky that all just look the same. All right, and the suburbs are all about um, having a choice between Applebee's and Subway. And what's ticky-tacky? <laughs> Haven't you ever heard that song? No. Oh. Well, I'll have to play it for you later. I was going to play the video in this webinar. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the intro to the Showtime show. I saw this intro on YouTube. It's the intro to the Showtime show Weeds, and it's the st- <laughs> it's a it's a television show based on this woman that her husband dies and she's got to sell pot to support her family. Oh no! <laughs> and uh, she lives in the suburbs, and everybody looks the same and acts the same and has the same cars and all that kind yeah. of crap. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that had nothing to do with the, the presentation. Well, it's where everybody in the suburbs are. Well, like yes, that. Everybody's right. the same. Everybody's, everybody's the same. It's where they put it out and that's there. Where and, everybody, all... and when the market's trending, Dave, everybody's following everybody exactly. else. Exactly. And everybody's saying the same thing. The trend is your friend. Mm-hmm. And I swear the trend at certain times, I can't understand why friends would do that to friends. I don't understand how the trend as a friend could do that to me. And what this discussion is about it's about, hey, when is a trend over? When is a trend likely to be over or close to being over? And in the same way that, Dave, when you owned a uh, popcorn and candy stand, right. you, you put wheels on your cart. I did. I did indeed. And I'd follow people around. <laughs> I just love the way that sounds, that you would follow people, <laughs> you would follow people so around. Here's popcorn. Here's some cotton candy. And there's only a few things we can do in the market. We can buy, sell, or do nothing. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're talking about the 62 exponential moving, simple moving average. All right, here's an updated view of the charts that we've been talking about. This is an updated view of the surprise trade. And what I want to do now, folks, is I want to spend some time with you this afternoon. And I really, we appreciate the time that you're spending with us. Dave, what are we, what are we selling today? Mm, popcorn. No. <laughs> nothing. 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 <laughs> exactly. We don't want you to sign up for anything. We don't want you to buy anything. We don't want you to even buy my book, although it is the best book on currency trading ever written. Mm-hmm. You can just get it from your library. What we want to talk about today is a strategy that you don't need to do anything else to implement except for listen to what we're about to say. There is nothing, there is nothing else That's here. This, this, is, this is all there is, and it's, it's, it's as simple as it looks here. What we're looking at right now is the dollar yen as expressed in the YUK contract. That's the that's the ISC options contract on the dollar yen. In all of these options contracts on the ISC, the dollar is the base pair. So even the euro dollar will be expressed in reverse as the dollar euro. This drives me absolutely insane, but um, not on the contracts. It just drives me insane when people on CNBC plop up it in the reverse. Yeah. All right, so this is the contract. At the bottom of the chart, you see of uh, the graph, you see the months. September of 01, September of 02, September of 03, and so forth. On the right axis, you'll see 180, 160, 120, 180, 60, and so forth. That's the actual um, price at which something traded. That's the actual price. So the blue line running through the middle of the graph, Dave, is the actual price, spot price on a daily basis, all the way from 2001 to 2008. Great. It's the spot price of the dollar yen. Now, in the middle here, these scatter plots that look like orch, what do you, orch block ink tests or whatever, mm-hmm. or, or Richter scale, or 
uh, lie detector stuff? Yeah, I'm okay. more familiar with it. Okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, your wife hooked one up. Um, those represent the distance that the currency pair went from its own daily 62 simple moving average. So here, between September of 2002 and September of 2003, I don't know why I'm using September as the base month here, but it doesn't matter. Between September of 2002 and 2003, you can see that on the daily chart, the dollar-yen moved 10 points away from the 800 simple moving average, because it's negative 10. That means that the currency pair dropped so far down and trended so far low that it fell 10 points away. The candles or the price or the closing price was 10 points away. So let's go back here and look at a chart. If you look at this chart of the pound daily, if we, went, if we go backwards a bit, you'll notice that the 62 is in the middle and the candles are moving above and below and above and below. And what I realized when doing these studies, and I didn't really adequately describe this, I think, the first time that we did mm -hmm. this webinar, what we noticed was, although the currency pair would swirl around the 62 back and forth, it spent the majority of its time around the moving average, actually, close to it. Mm -hmm. And the exceptions were when it drifted away from it. Now, for a moment here, think about in your mind that if you could tell a certain number of, of points distance that was too far away for this currency pair to be from the... The 62 or, or any other moving or any average, other moving average if you could tell that, you could actually trade an options contract back to this point of equilibrium. So if it went 10 points away from the 62, that might be too far below. And it might be trending, and the whole earth might be thrilled about sure. the trend, Sure. but actually the uh, currency pair could jump back up. So let's look, at it, let's look at the chart a different way with these red dots in the chart, Dave. And these red dots in the chart represent these levels at which... Which it seems to go, but then come back. Go and turn around. Look yeah. at how many times in 2001, in 2002, twice, in 2003, twice, in 2004, once, in 2005. It got four points away from the daily 62. It's a very rare occurrence for it to get yeah. that far away from yeah. it. And then it reversed, and it went right back to the 62. The price went back up. And this is a methodology for determining how far is too far. And hello, surprise, something's moved so far away in a trend that it's ready to snap back. Right. And that's, what, that's exactly what this is about right here that we're discussing. If you look on the top side, it looks like four on the top side is also something of a barrier. Do you notice that, you know, in 2003, let's see if we can, I don't even, I don't know if I'll be able to draw, but I'm certainly going to try. Yeah, in 2003, look at that. Four was too far. Look at two. Two represents something as well, though, doesn't it? It hits two more often than it does four. Yeah, I mean, look at how many opportunities there are here. Opportunity. No pun, ah, no pun good, intended. Very good pun. Look at all those. And all of those times that it goes two points away, it can snap right back. What's interesting about it is you're looking at a significant move back and over, the, over a period of days and weeks back up after it's trended too far lower or back down after it's trended too far upward. Here's the dollar yen from just in the last 12 months. From June of 07 to the present, um, we've noticed that four is obviously mm -hmm. a barrier on the top side and on the bottom side. But not only is four a barrier, but two seems to be a barrier. And so if we pull open our charts, if you pulled open your charts right now on the daily charts, let's, and we're going to go backwards in time just, just to take a look at this, and we'll, we'll just take a look. We can actually just say, all right, here's a, here's a low point of the currency pair. Here's a high point. And right now, let's say that, that the currency pair was trading right here. We could actually measure the distance between this point and the 62 and see if we've gone outside the barriers of too far on each of these pairs. And if we have, we can actually start to express our opinions about the trend coming to an end in the form of buying a, buying a call, buying a put, uh, a, a bear spread, or a bull spread, or a condor, or a giraffe, or a jackalope, or whatever you want to do, all the different kinds of things that you can do. We ought to make up some of those. Thank you for listening to our podcast.